Hi, I'm Dr. Karen Becker, and today we're discussing my favorite topic, raw food diets for pets. We're going to discuss some of the myths and truths surrounding raw food diets, but before we get into the good stuff, it's important to have a foundation of understanding about basic nutrition. One point that no one's going to argue about is that for optimal health to occur, animals must consume the foods that they were designed to eat. I call this a species appropriate diet. So vegetarian animals must eat vegetation for optimal health and carnivorous animals must eat fresh whole prey for optimal health. A good place to start with our carnivorous pets is to go back to a dog's and cat's roots prior to the domestication. The domestic dog, whose taxonomic name is Canis lupus familiaris, is a domesticated form of the gray wolf, which is a member of the Canidae family of the order Carnivora. Most scientists believe that dogs were domesticated from gray wolves about 15,000 years ago. But DNA analysis published in 1997 suggests that the transformation from wolves to domestic dogs occurred more like 130,000 years ago. Data suggests dogs first diverged from wolves in East Asia, and then these domesticated dogs quickly migrated throughout the world. And of course, humans began selectively breeding dogs to create animals that suited their needs and their likes. The earliest direct evidence of a cat domestication is a kitten that was found buried alongside a human approximately 9,500 years ago in Cyprus. Researchers have gained a major insight through DNA testing into the evolution of cats by showing how they migrated to new continents and developed new species as the sea levels rose and fell. A 2008 study revealed that lines of descent for all house cats, which are Felis catus, probably came from self-domesticating African wildcats up to 10,000 years ago. And like the domesticated dog, humans began breeding cats to suit their fancy, recognizing over 80 breeds of cats that have been created today by one registry or another. Um, so there are lots of different kitty species now that humans have created. So despite humans' recent desire to create certain physical characteristics in dogs and cats, this is called their phenotype or how animals look externally, both dogs and cats genotype or their genetic makeup remains essentially the same as their wild ancestors, which should tell you something about the foods that they should still be consuming and eating. Of course, all animals are biologically equipped to assimilate and digest foods that they were designed to eat. So for instance, earthworms are, de are really designed to process dirt. Um, their whole GI tract from their mouth to excretion was designed for this purpose. And they're set up perfectly to be able to process dirt as their digestive task. Cows are designed to eat grass, and their, and their GI tracts are set up perfectly for this. Cows have big, round, flat teeth used to grind grasses and an unbelievable range of motion in their mandibles, allowing them to chew, 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 chew. They have a lot of range of motion laterally in their jaws. Dogs and cats do not have this motion in their jaws. Dogs and cats' jaws move only up and down like a trap door or a hinge because dogs and cats are gulpers. They're not chewers, so they don't have chewing teeth. Dogs and cats have incredibly sharp interlocking teeth designed to rip and tear flesh. Dogs and cats have very short GI tracts compared to vegetarian animals that need to ferment foods as carnivorous animals consume foods with potentially very heavy pathogen loads. So they were really meant to get foods in and get foods out very quickly. The ancestral lifestyle of a carnivore includes lots of variety and seasonal variability, meaning certain prey were more prevalent at certain times of the year. They thrived consuming fresh, living, and whole animals, but carnivorous animals uh, do not eat clean foods. Dogs and cats did not evolve to consume sterile foods, and they have digestive tracts that are designed to be resilient and handle the loads of naturally occurring bacteria that are present in the foods that they ate. Their food was moisture dense, meaning the prey that they consumed was primarily water. The carnivorous lifestyle required a tremendous amount of exercise and exertion. Food was not served to them, so they had to stealthily catch it. This provided intense stimulation of all of their senses, plus nervous, skeletal, endocrine, and circulatory system involvement. Uh, carnivorous animals had daily rigorous workouts in an attempt to catch enough food to not starve to death. 
What's very important for pet owners to note is that pet food is a relatively new concept. So dog food and cat food that you would be able to buy from the supermarket has only been around a little bit more than 100 years. However, animals have hunted prey, or in the case of dogs, scavenged for millions of years. And although recent research has demonstrated that domesticated carnivores have bodily changes that show some adaptations to metabolizing some starches, as humans became planters and farmers of grains, dogs and cats uh, really have not evolved into vegetarians since that, since that time. In the last 100 years, since major pet food companies have produced the majority of pet foods from a vase of corn, wheat, rice, and potato, our carnivorous pets have not had a flurry of evolution to be able to process these foreign foods. The good news is dogs and cats are adaptable and resilient, unlike other species, let's say snakes. If we suddenly force snakes to consume grains or, uh, or die, or consume vegetation or die, they would simply die demonstrating rather visibly that they were not provided the correct food source. Dogs and cats are some of the most resilient animals on the planet, and so they're able to withstand really significant nutritional abuse, in my opinion, without dying. Degenerating does occur, but suddenly dying doesn't. So part of the deception of feeding dogs and cats inappropriate foods for the last 100 years is that they haven't died of acute starvation. They've consumed these inappropriate foods, which have kept them alive, but far from the thriving status of their wild relatives. Instead, we've created dozens of generations of nutritionally weakened animals that suffer from degenerative diseases linked to nutritional deficiencies that most veterinarians have not acknowledged. The Pottinger's cat study is just one example of how our current system of nourishing pets is really creating a lot of chronic disease in our pet populations. The truth of the matter is, our current animal population provides a place for recycling in the human food industry. Grains that fail inspection, uninspected pieces and parts left over from the seafood industry, leftover restaurant grease, downer cows, dead farm animals, diseased livestock, and roadkill all must be picked up and disposed of through rendering, a process that converts all sorts of animal protein into raw materials for the pet food industry. These raw materials are purchased by huge pet food manufacturers, you know, the big brands your parents and friends have probably fed for the last 50 years, who then blend the rendered fat and meat with a large amount of unnecessary starch. They add a bulk vitamin mineral supplement. They extrude it at high temperatures, creating all sorts of toxic reactions, including advanced glycation end products and heterocyclic amines, and then sell it to you at an unbelievable profit and call it pet food. Is the entire system flawed and damaged? Yes, but the pet food industry giants are realizing that pet owners are beginning to become more educated about the system. They are, and really, they are trying to clean up their image. We are beginning to see words like natural and no byproducts on labels, and we're beginning to see grain-free and naturally preserved on labels as well. Manufacturers are hearing the grumbles of educated pet owners and are changing their marketing to try and regain lost customers. I have found it amazing that pet parents have fallen for marketing gimmicks that human parents would have never fallen for. For instance, how often have you heard a pediatrician say, never feed your baby anything but X brand of baby food because feeding a homemade diet could be dangerous to your child's health? Never. But um, you do hear that in the veterinary world. How about this one? Switching your brand of baby food could lead to GI problems, so only feed one brand or type of baby food to your children for the rest of their lives to avoid GI problems. You would never hear that, and yet you do hear that in the veterinary industry. It's a little startling to me that entire generations of people have actually believed that pets must have pet food to be healthy. And then there's a whole host of other myths that you probably have heard. For instance, that pets can derive all of the nutrients for vibrant health from a dry nugget that can be fed day after day, year after year. That if they don't feed crunchy food to their pets, that their pet's teeth won't be cleaned. That canned food is too rich and raw food is simply a recent trendy craze that could be risky. Uh, a lot of people believe that my vet wouldn't recommend X brand of food if it wasn't good for my pet. And that all cats should eat fish and drink milk and that veterinarians are the people to trust for the most up-to-date information pertaining to nutrition, and that disease, degeneration, and poor vitality have nothing to do with day-to-day -day nourishment. All myths. So what are the facts? Carbohydrates are not a necessary component of the carnivorous diet. Cats have no taste receptors for sweet flavors and have low rates of glucose uptake in the intestine. They should not be fed any type of grains that metabolize into sugar. Cats have no salivary amylase to break down starches, and dogs have very low amylase secretion. 
cats never hunted fish from the ocean, and it's not an evolutionary food source for them. The intense heat used to process commercial pet foods destroys and reduces vitamins, minerals, and enzymes in the food. Digestibility of amino acids in processed pet food has changed significantly by the heating process. Processed pet foods require supplementation to replace lost nutrients, and digestibility of meat-based protein is proven to be superior to plant-based protein for dogs and cats. So in a nutshell, for 99.999% of the time, dogs and cats have consumed a natural diet. For 0.001% of the time, dogs and cats have consumed an extruded processed diet. Dogs and cats evolved to consume a low carbohydrate diet. And in the last 100 years, the majority of pet owners have fed pets a high carbohydrate, low moisture diet, creating significant metabolic and physiologic stress and the root causes of most of the degenerative diseases and inflammatory processes that now plague our pet population.